Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here at Northside Christian Church for a little bit of a different practice round. I'm going to be using glow discs only. I'm going to be using the glow disc loadout that I use for the glow rounds here uh, that are, uh, you know, that's ran by uh, Lucky Ace Discs and Dead of Night Disc Golf. And so all I'm going to play is with my 11 discs that I use um, and I'm going to play the course essentially as it played last Friday, which I b believe will be the typical setup here. It's basically a custom nine hole layout that's played twice for a total of 18 holes. And I'm going to give you sort of the, my play by play in terms of how I like to play it. Uh, last Friday, I managed to win first place in the recreational division out of seven players. Uh, and, uh, you know, I won in a playoff in uh, overtime, basically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, that's basically what, what I'm doing here. As you can tell, it's uh, bright. <laughs> uh, and so you can see everything. And so that's why I chose to do this here. Um, and I'm also going to try to give a few tips on playing a glow round. And uh, so, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, hole one is a custom hole. Uh, instead of playing the 700-foot par four, you're playing to a basket that's about 250 feet out in that direction, about in the middle. It's typically lit with a light on top of it. And uh, fortunately, we have some lights that tend to be off to the side here um, that is, makes the area somewhat well lit as it is. Okay, I'm safely in bounds with this uh, reactor and I went ahead measured out 250 feet and from what I remember playing last Friday I'm not sure if you can see it on that camera but that proxy over there Axiom proxy is approximately approximately where the basket is supposed to be so I've got my armadillo and I'm gonna just throw an approach shot oh yeah bullseye so essentially the basket is generally right here and that's basically, you know, a par. So with some conservative play and the basket right here, you can tend to make par as long as you don't get too aggressive and throw out of bounds. Okay, hole two is here, very close to 1S on some of the layouts or 1S on some of the other layouts, just next to this basketball goal. And you basically throw it that way to the basket over there. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a drive going. I think I'm warmed up enough where I can use a driver. Whew. Oh yeah. That uh, got me over the path. That's what I needed. Okay, so for me, this is a good drive. I've got my leopard about uh, 25, 30 feet out. I think I'm right. Actually, I'm circle's edge. Anyways, um, just want to point out that uh, if you don't have a glow mini like I do, you can easily get a glow sticker, put it on top, heck, get two, put one on the bottom as well. And uh, you can uh, use that. The reason why I mention that is one of my uh, subscribers uh, pointed out, grab you a roll of glow tape. One little piece illuminates for much brighter and longer than the discs that you do charge. Um, and you'll see the, the tape uh, better. It'll also allow you to throw your best disc. So for me, you know, I just grabbed 11 of these discs that I happen to have that are glow. But you can use any disc you want. Just put a glow sticker on it. So thank you very much, uh, Bammer494, for that advice. And now I'm going to go ahead and putt. Let me see if I can make a birdie. <sighs> oh, I fluffed it. Okay, easy par. <laughs> and with that said pretty easy par. I'm happy with that. I'm not really looking for a birdie on a hole like this that's just at the edge of my throwing distance. One of the things I want to mention is when you play a glow round at a course, some of the OB and Mando rules may not apply, so you want to check in with your the tournament director or read the rules and or read the rules beforehand and see if there's any uh, uh, outliers. I think in some of these cases, like for here, it was pitch dark. Um, you can't see any sort of lines and there's no lines written out here because it's a more casual tournament. So typically that path is OB, but I believe for this tournament it's uh, not OB. Again, that's something to check with your TD and uh, uh, you know, just to help establish what kind of throws you can make before you make a throw because 
If you are playing really conservative and safe and you're trying to get on that path, for example, but the path is OB, you made a wrong decision. So definitely find that out. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and try to throw. All right, perfect. On the edge, not on the path. Okay, in this case, uh, the normal flight path I would use, I'd grab the armadillo and I'd throw straight towards the basket, but where I'm positioned, this tree is in the way, so I'm gonna have to to make a different choice, a different disc selection. So I'm gonna bring out the uh, glow pig. I'm gonna try to throw it in that gap and let it kind of curve around. Let's go. So the good news for me is easy par, three pars in a row. Okay, the basket is over there. It's gonna be hard for you to see on camera, but I'm gonna take my glow thunderbird here and I'm gonna let loose my first full rip on a hole. And I'm out there. Really, that's all I want. Okay, so I'm in a really good spot here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my Envy and I'm gonna try to get it close to the basket. This is just outside my putting range normally. Um, about 60 to 70 feet, I would try to putt fairly hard just to get it close enough within 10 feet of the basket. This is just outside that range. It's like 80, 85. So I'm just going to take my Envy and I'm just going to throw it and try to get closer to the basket with less effort. There we go. Good job. Hey, you know what? I'm going to try sidearm. All right, so let's try a pig sidearm shot just to kind of see how that goes. It skittled up. Okay, that's a putt. Okay, with that said, got a easy par here. So I'm pretty happy with the results. And uh, yeah, this is basically how I made a par <laughs> for my f finale at the tournament. Oh, this is hole four in the traditional layout. In this layout, it's hole five because it's a custom glow round. And with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw it that way. Last time I was here, I threw a driver directly into a tree because I couldn't see the tree. <laughs> I didn't realize the tree was there, so that's one reason to get familiar with the course before a glow round if possible, or play a practice round, etc. Or maybe shine a flashlight, try to see what, what's in front of you. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and try to throw in that direction. In the middle of the fairway, that's about all I want. Okay, I'm a good 120 feet out, and I need something that'll reach there. I would use the armadillo if I was within about 100 feet, but given I'm about 120 out, and I want to more easily get over there, the proxy is a little bit more aerodynamic uh, so for this shot, and that's what I need. Let's go, pin high. And actually, one of the things to think about when you're doing upshots or any sort of throw or putt, any disc will do the job. It's what you're most comfortable with in terms of doing, and you're, uh, maybe you're experienced with that particular disc or certain types of shot shapes with different discs. So, for example, the Dillo would have probably been just fine for an upshot from there. But for me, mentally, the uh, proxy was what I needed for that moment. So with that said, here's the AVR. This is the putter I trust the most. So. Clearly, it won't let me down here. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm on hole six of this layout. Um, typically, there's a path that denotes the OB, but there's no markings on it, and at night, you can't see the path. So I'm pretty sure the uh, OB isn't really a thing here, but that Mando, I'm pretty sure, does count. Though, again, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm gonna play, I tend to play as if this Mando is always in effect, even if I can't tell where the OB is or if it's an island hole for some tournaments or whatever. So yeah, I'm just gonna go straight down the gap. Basket is that way. I just got my trusty leopard. And I'm just, I typically try to throw it to the left a little bit. I don't care if I get a par on this hole. Okay, hit the Mando. 
Okay, so I'm a good 150 feet out, so um, that tree is basically directly in the path. So I could throw something fairly straight, but the likelihood of hitting this tree is fairly high. So I need something that allows me to go a little bit farther out that way, but has enough stability to come back in. So that's where this infinite disc ruin comes in. I'm about 150 out, maybe more. So I'm gonna try to dial it in with this ruin. All right, I've got a long distance putt. Okay, so I've had two misfires in a row, which is pretty much why I still play in the rec division. Even though I have distance that's better than 250 feet and my putting accuracy is a little bit better, my throwing accuracy is, you know, not, not as good. <laughs> and so that's what keeps me in rec. So as soon as I get better with throwing, I'll do that. Let me try to save the par. Oh, okay, that's my best attribute. Okay, I'm now at the scariest hole of course, in my opinion, uh, where you can easily throw in a disc. So I'm gonna slow down and focus. Uh, just try to get it over. And I'm over. I didn't wanna speak a lot and jinx myself. So here's actually a good birdie opportunity. So this is actually better than I typically get get on this hole. I tend to throw understable plastic and curve it over so that leopard was properly stable and I was able to get the nice uh, hyzer enough to where it would fly as expected. With that said, I am 30, I'm about 30 feet out so I'm going to presume that I'm inside the circle. To be honest, I don't step putt or jump putt anyways, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh, fluffed it. <laughs> so I'll just keep it real with you. I was a little bit timid and scared when I was making that putt attempt, so I fluffed it. I didn't have like a yip. I just, it was too soft. I never gave it a chance. Alrighty. We've arrived at hole eight on this custom layout. And if you haven't seen this before, this is actually behind the house. It's here on the property, just a little bit past the previous hole that was over there. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and start gearing up to throw over this bayou that you can't really see here, but I'll show you after I, after I throw. Okay, so for me, I know my game. I tend to hyzer a little more when I'm nervous. So I'm gonna aim to the right of the basket and hopefully I don't hyzer too much that I can get on that shelf. Um, the only OB I believe is in the actual creek itself. I don't know if that concrete plays as OB or not because there's no map indicating this hole. So, and again, that's something to check with the TD. That said, I'm gonna go ahead and throw and just see if I can get over. The uh, edge of the tee pad, I think, is around here somewhere, but I can't see it. I'm just gonna throw from here. I uh, anhyzered it too much. I'm over and I'm safe, but that's not what I wanted. Okay, so this uh, throw with the leopard, I fritzed out <laughs> and I threw it on kind of an anhyzer. <laughs> I was expecting to throw it hyzer and then I anhyzered it. So that's something I'm gonna have to look at in video and try to figure out. But that said, I'm about 60 out. So I just wanna get within 10 feet of the basket. I'm like 55. I just wanna get within 10 feet of the basket. That's all I want. Okay, again, an easy par. Now, if I had uh, dialed my throwing in, it's something I'm working on this month. In theory, I could have birdied this and maybe a few of the other holes, but I'm not really complaining. I just don't want to get worse than par in any of these holes if I can help it. We have finally arrived at hole 13 in the main layout, but hole nine in this custom layout. This is the final hole of the nine hole layout that you play twice for this uh, glow round, glow tournament. And uh, yeah, one of the things I want to mention is <clears throat> When you're playing at dark, particularly if this is one of the first times you've played, give yourself a lot of grace, a lot of forgiveness, because you're gonna make mistakes you didn't realize you could make <laughs> when it's pitch black and you can't see anything. And the only thing you can see is your disc, which sometimes makes it worse, because you can see this because it's bright, but everything looks relatively darker. So bottom line is, I'm just gonna try to throw something out there in the middle. I'm just gonna try to throw something flat. I'm gonna spend a little more time sizing up what I'm gonna do. So bear with me, please.
a little too high, but I got the angle that I wanted. I'm very happy with that other than it was too high. So that's, that's a win. Okay, I'm a good 80 out, I think. Uh, maybe 70, 70, 75, 70 to 75 out. So um, I could throw anything here for an upshot, but typically I want to throw the slowest disc I have in order to minimize the amount of traveling that it's going to do on the ground, provided that I get it <laughs> far enough so the skittle doesn't happen as much. So I'm going to take this dillo, I'm just going to try to throw it next to the basket. Perfect. Okay, so here's a little bit of a fun fact. When I uh, won that glow round tournament, I actually did so in the exact same fashion that you saw here. I have to put a driver out there about 70, 80 feet out. I approached here with my armadillo to literally this spot. <laughs> and then uh, I made this putt. And that's how I won my first uh, recreational glow round tournament. Nice. All right, I wish I could say I planned that out, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm just glad that it worked uh, identical to last time. Uh, so yeah, that's this is basically what you can expect if you play this uh, layout. I'll be talking with Steve-O and Brian Trahan, the ones that uh, run this tournament. I'll be talking with them tomorrow night before we play again, just kind of iron out the rules. And they will, of course, see in this video by then, so they can kind of let me know uh, what's up. But uh, with that said, uh, definitely keep, you know, night rounds of disc golf in mind. There may be some playing in your area. Just go to U-Disc, go to the uh, events section, look for league events that are playing, look for what's happening today, tonight, tomorrow, etc. And you too can find uh, rounds that are taking place at night. You'll find there's typically a lot of friendly people there. They're willing to help you out with stickers and help you uh, light up your disc and show you where to throw, etc. And uh, it's uh, maybe an under uh, scene uh, aspect of this sport is the general friendliness of all the people e even the more introverted and socially awkward people like myself very friendly and uh, we'll generally help each other out a lot so uh, with that said I hope you like this video please subscribe if you haven't already as I have more disc golf videos on the way thank you very much for watching and have a great day